Dear students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know about crime, crime scene and various types of crime scenes, basic reasons behind the commission of a crime, the crime scene investigation and Locard's principle of exchange, who are the members of a crime scene team, the seven important stages of a crime scene investigation including securing of crime scene, scanning of crime scene, sketching of the crime scene, searching of evidences, documentation of crime scene, collection and packaging of evidences, chain of custody and reconstruction of the crime scene. First, we'll start with an introduction to crime. What is a crime? Crime is an act or the commission of an act that is not allowed or the omission of a responsibility that is ordered by a public law and that makes the criminal accountable to punishment by that law. What is a crime scene? A crime scene is a place where a crime has occurred or another place where sign of a crime may be established and includes the part from where maximum of the physical evidences are retrieved by law enforcement personnel, crime scene investigators or in occasional circumstances forensic scientists. Crime scenes may or may not be where the crime has happened. There are various stages and kinds of crime scenes. Types of crime scene. A different type of crime scenes include outdoors, indoor and convent. Outside scene of crime is the very challenging to scrutinize. The experience with the fundamentals such as rain, breeze or heat as well as animal movement infects the crime scene and causes damage to evidences. Indoor crime scenes have a significantly lower chance of contamination due to lack of exposure. The contamination here usually comes from the people factor. Next is conveyance. Conveyance crime scenes are offenses done by means of transport such as robbery or auto theft. All type of crime scenes with the nature of the crime done, robbery, homicide, rape etc. has diverse procedures. Why a crime is committed? There are several reasons behind the commission of a crime. A crime may be committed for the following reasons. First, lure of money. Second, for the sake of revenge. And third, emotions like love, hate or anger. Now, we will look into crime scene investigation. An effective crime scene examination uses the stages of procedure in the detection, protection and gathering of physical evidences. The corpus delicti of an offence that is body of the crime must be clear. At a crime scene, before starting investigation, it must be proved that the crime has occurred as well as the person who is charged with the crime was accountable for the commission of crime. The aim of a crime scene examination is to identify, document and gather evidences at the scene of a crime. Resolving the crime will depend on joining together the evidence to form an image of what can take place at the crime scene. The first individual to notice this condition was Dr. Edmund Lockhart, director of the world's first forensic laboratory in Lyons, France. The Lockhart's exchange principle said that when an individual comes into interaction with an object or another individual, a cross transfer of physical evidence will occur. The exchange substances shows that two objects were in contact. The second part of Locard's principle says that the strength, period and nature of the constituents in contact decide the extent of the transmission. Now crime scene team. A crime scene team includes team members, first police officer of the scene, protects the scene, medics if necessary, investigators and medical examiner if necessary to declare death, identify the body, determine cause and manner and time of death. A medical examiner is responsible for recognizing the dead, found the time and date of death, determine a medical cause of death that is injury or disease that resulted in the person's dying, determine the mechanism of death the physiological reason that the person died, classify the manner of the death, whether natural, accidental, suicide, homicide or uncertain and inform the subsequent scene. 
In the team, there should also be a photographer, a technician and some lab experts. Crime scene investigation, the seven important stages. The stages of crime scene examination are first, securing the crime scene, second, scanning the scene, third, sketching the scene, fourth, searching for physical evidences, fifth, documentation of crime scene, sixth, securing, collection and packaging of evidences. 7th is chain of custody and 8th is crime scene reconstruction. Now let us understand these stages in detail. First, securing the crime scene. The scene of crime should be secured in manner to isolate the crime scene from the people who can disturb the potential evidences. It may disturb the investigation. When a crime scene is called in, the first officer at the scene should protect the scene to safeguard the damage of evidences. Anyone not involved in the investigation must be kept out. No one must use the toilet, towels, phone, lights, etc. On arrival at scene of crime, the first priority of an investigation officer is to provide medical assistance to individuals and arresting the perpetrators. Ropes or barriers and protectors will preserve illegal access to the area. Each person who come in the scene of crime has the potential to damage physical evidences. He also has to ask the following question. When did the crime occur? Who called in the crime? Who is the victim? Can the perpetrator be identified? What did you see happening? Where were you when you observed the crime scene? Now the second stage, scanning the scene. The crime scene should be scanned cautiously in order to find out the hidden details of the scene. A walkthrough must be performed by the crime scene investigator, the officer and occasionally by the lead detective in order to psychologically prepare a reconstruction theory. The crime scene investigator must note the following things. First, any temporary or unconfined evidence which can change over time must be noted. The environmental conditions and weather conditions must be recorded properly. Point of entry, exit and path of travel within the crime scene. Record the initial records like who, what, where, when and how. Recognize special requirements contained by the crime scene for persons, protections or apparatus and inform senior officers or other agency. Third stage is sketching the scene. The concluding phase in writing down the scene is creation a crime scene sketch. The weakness of pictures is that they are 2D illustrations of 3D objects. As an outcome, most pictures can misrepresent the three-dimensional relations of the snapped items, showing items to look nearer together or further at a distance than their actual position is. A sketch is usually made of the seen as if one is looking straight down, overhead sketch or straight ahead, elevation sketch at a crime scene. A rough sketch at the scene is generally prepared initially on graph paper by pencil. A final sketch may be made later by using inks, paper and ruler or a computer. The original rough sketch must be preserved and well maintained in case it is needed at a later date. Once the scene has been systematically documented, documented, then the evidence gathering can be started. Next stage is searching for evidences. Before searching for evidence, it is very essential to know what could be the sources of evidence. The following sources may provide potential evidence which may lead to investigation. First body, second primary and secondary crime scene and third is the suspect. The primary crime scene is defined as the place where the crime took place, whereas a secondary crime scene is a location other than the primary crime scene, but that is in some way related to the crime, where evidence is found. There are various search patterns to look for evidences. The examining array chosen at a scene of crime depends on the dimensions and location of the scene and also on the number of gatherers 
contributing in the search. Typical examples of crime scene search patterns are grid, line or strip method, quadrant or zone method, wheel or ray method, and spiral method. Now let us understand all these methods in detail. First, grid method. It is basically a double line search method. It is very operational method, but sometimes very time consuming. Line or strip method. This method is best in large and outdoor crime scenes. Next is quadrant or zone method. This method is most effective in houses or buildings. Groups are allocated in small zones for the examining and collection of the evidences. Wheel or ray method. Wheel or ray method is best on small and circular crime scenes. Spiral method. It can go internal or external. It is best used when there are no physical barricades present. The given pictures may help us in understanding crime scene search patterns more effectively. Spiral method, grid method, linear method are seen in these pictures. Next stage is documentation of crime scene. Timely recording of an offense scene is very essential. For the investigation and any subsequent trials, the reason being that a scene of crime remains untouched is very limited. The following three methods are used for the crime scene recording. First, photography and videography. Second, sketches. And third, notes. First, photography and videography. An unaltered crime scene is very important. In case any object is moved, removed or replaced, it should be noted properly. In no situations, it should be reintroduced. Remember following points while photographing the crime scene. Crime scene photos should include the immediate scene. The photographs must be taken from all relevant angles and adjacent areas. The close-ups of victim's relative position in the scene and any injuries must be photographed. Photograph any possible weapons. Photograph the area under the body. Photo record all evidence as it is found and if size is significant, a point of reference should be included in the picture. Use advanced technology to record crime scenes such as Digital photos which allow near three-dimensional panoramic views of the scene of crime. Photos of scene and surroundings should be taken. The mid-range to close the photos with various angles of each piece of evidence should be taken. Videotaping scene of crime is rising in popularity. While videotaping the crime scene, the investigator must narrate as he or she records the scene. Videography allows for description, non-subjective and diverse perception. Second, sketches. The sketch must include date, time, scale, reference points, distance measurements, name of investigators, victims, suspects, a legend, that is the key, etc. Third is notes. The maintenance of notes is a persistent work when handling a scene of crime and the notes must include a detailed written descriptions of crime scene with locations of potential evidence including time of discover of evidence and who find it and who packed and marked it disposition of item after being collected etc b the notes must be detailed enough to refresh one's memory even after months or years after processing c date time explanation of the location weather and environmental conditions description of the crime location of the evidence relative to other key points the names of all persons involved alterations that have happened and other important information all these must be mentioned in the notes next stage is securing collecting and packaging of evidences one team member must be assigned to look for the evidence collection. It should be done to ensure that the evidence is collected, packaged, marked, sealed and preserved in a consistent manner, maintaining the chain of custody. Evidence can be substantial to microscopic. 
A. Every article should be placed in an isolated container, sealed and labeled. B. The most delicate evidence is gathered and packed first. C. Various kinds of evidences need particular or special assembly and packaging methods. D. The body is the property of the coroner or the medical examiner. Gathering of evidence on the body is complete by that division. E. It can only be identified in crime lab. Example, traces of blood on clothing, hair and fibers from vacuum sweeps. F. It is occasionally essential to seize clothing from victim and perpetrator. G. Critical regions must be vacuumed. Sweepings from diverse areas should be kept separate. H. Fingernail scratchings must also be taken from suspects and victims. I. All evidence needs to be properly packaged, sealed and labeled. J. The evidence record must comprise all relevant information consisting of case number, item inventory number, description of the evidence, name of the suspect, name of the victim, date and time of recovery, signature of person recovering the evidence and signature of any witnesses that are present at the scene of crime. Most items should be packaged in a primary container and then placed inside a secondary one. Pill bottles, vials, manila envelopes and plastic bags are good for most evidences. Trace evidence may be placed on a piece of paper which is then folded in a particular way called a druggist's fold. Next, these are then placed inside other containers such as paper bags, plastic bags, canisters, packets or envelopes depending on the type and size of the evidence. Evidence is placed in a paper bundle. The size of the bundle depends on the size of the evidence. Entire objects should be sent to the lab. Each different item must be placed in separate containers. Packaging evidence separately prevents cross-contamination. Unbreakable plastic pill bottles, excellent containers for hair, fiber and glass evidence. Small amounts of trace evidences can be conveniently packaged in a carefully folded paper called druggist fold. Folding one end of the paper over one third then folding the other end one third over that and then repeating the process from the other two sides. After the paper is folded, the outside two edges are tucked into each other to produce a closed container. Next is chain of custody. Maintenance of chain of custody is very essential. The chain of custody may be defined as the documented and an unbroken transfer of evidence. There must be a written record of all people who have had possession of an item of evidence beginning at the time of collection. Every person who handles the evidence must be accounted for. The evidence container must be marked for identification. If evidence is turned over to another person, the transfer must be recorded. An evidence log and a chain of custody document must be attached to every evidence container. All items must be carefully packaged and marked upon their retrieval at the scene. Record to show collector's initial location of evidence and date of collection. Seal the evidence and the collector's signature is written across the sealed edge. When the package is reopened at the lab, it is opened at a location other than the sealed edge. Every time opened, new seal, new signature and place in new evidence bag. Next stage is crime scene reconstruction. Crime scene reconstruction is a method used to support a likely sequence of events at a crime scene by observing and evaluating physical evidences and statements made by those involved. Reconstruction of crime scene is a team effort which involves putting together many different pieces of a puzzle. The collection and documentation of physical evidence is the foundation of a reconstruction. The investigator captures the nature of the scene on an initial walkthrough. Using physical evidence, investigator can hypothesize about what occurred, where it occurred and when it occurred. Reconstruction of crime scene involves forming a hypothesis of the sequence of events 
from before the crime was committed through its commission. We will end this module with a summary. First, a crime is defined as an act or the omission of an act that is forbidden or the omission of a duty that is commanded by a public law and that makes the offender liable to punishment by that law. Outdoor crime scenes are the most difficult to investigate due to the exposure of scene to rain, wind, heat, animal activity as they contaminate the crime scene and leads to the destruction of evidences. A successful crime scene investigation utilizes a step-by-step -step process in the discovery, preservation and collection of physical evidences. The Locard's exchange principle states that when a person comes into contact with an object or another person, a cross-transfer of physical evidence can occur. The exchanged materials indicate the two objects were in contact. A crime scene team includes team members, first police officer on the scene to protect the scene, medics, investigators, medical examiner, photographer, technician, and lab experts. A medical examiner is responsible for identifying the diseased, establish the time and date of death, determine a medical cause of death, determine the mechanism of death, classify the manner of death and notify the next to the kin. The crime scene investigator must note any transient or conditional evidence that could change over time must be noted. The environmental conditions and weather conditions must be recorded properly. Point of entry, exit and path of travel within the crime scene should be recorded. Record the initial observations such as who, what, where, when and how. A rough sketch at the scene is usually made first on graph paper in pencil. A final sketch can be made later using inks, paper and ruler or a computer. Grid, line or strip method, quadrant or zone method, wheel or ray method and spiral are the typical examples of crime scene search pattern for evidence collection. The search pattern selected at a crime scene depends on the size and location of the scene and also on the number of collectors participating in the search. Date, time, description of the location, weather and environmental conditions description of the crime, location of the evidence relative to other key points, the names of all people involved, modifications that have occurred and other relevant information. The chain of custody may be defined as the documented and unbroken transfer of evidence. Crime scene reconstruction is a method used to support a likely sequence of events at a crime scene by observing and evaluating physical evidences and statements made by those involved. 